Changes in management of Bill and Shirley Wright's South Canterbury sheep and cattle farm over the past two decades have resulted in a substantial reduction in their greenhouse gas emissions. A number of CRIs have been involved on the property, including Ag Research. It's seen the Wright's farm move from being predominantly lamb and wool production to a flexible land use policy with a high proportion of cattle, including dairy support. Ag Research has been involved on the property with Bill and Shirley over the last three years because Bill and Shirley are monitor farmers for two of our research projects. One led by Dairy NZ, Forages for Reduced Nitrate Leaching, and the second funded by the New Zealand Agricultural Greenhouse Gas Centre, which is a farm systems project. We're interested in measuring both the loss of nutrients, particularly nitrates, to water, and secondly, the loss of greenhouse gases to air. So emissions off the farm, emissions going to water, and emissions going to air. So we've been particularly interested in understanding emissions from the farm systems, and this really links up with the kind of research that's been going on in the laboratories where we've been doing detailed measurements of methane emissions from different feed types. What we've done on farm is used a lot of the relationships that they've developed to put them into the models and say, here's a model of our farm system. Understanding these principles, we can then estimate greenhouse gas emissions. And our interest at Bill and Shirley's farm is we've got the models, but can we measure what we've been modelling? When we're talking about the greenhouse gases is on a sheep and beef property, we're talking about the methane which is being emitted by the animals, burping, and also nitrous oxide, but predominantly methane is the biggest contributor to the greenhouse gases on farm. New Zealand has responsibilities in terms of the Paris Accord, but we also see that we are a global exporter. So one, we have what New Zealand's international responsibilities are, but two, our products go to discerning customers worldwide. And so they have an interest in the efficiency and greenhouse gas emissions are certainly on their radar and eventually will become of increasing importance to New Zealand. Bill and Shirley and their property are a really great case study for us because they purchased this property back in the early 1990s and were good at record keeping back there. They were then a monitor farm so they've got a very good set of records which they've carried on right through till today. We have 380 hectares. We're basically farming about 80% cattle and those make up bulls, dairy grazers and then about 1,000 ewes. We're dry land farming, so our strength used to be we used to say it's our winter, but um, we've probably modified our feed curve by growing summer feeds and lucerne's one of those and a forage grazing maize is one that's really helped us big time. We want to minimise our, our risk to climatic conditions and that's drought or um, or winter, winter events, but also the environmental impacts now are really important on our farming operation. So everything we do, we have to consider what environmental impact or what it has on stock welfare, you know, welfare of stock. Um, we're in the spotlight and we need to actually prove that we're, um, we've, we're, we're capable of giving us the social licence to farm, basically. When Robin Dines from Ag Research approached us about this Forages to Reduce Nitrate programme, it was another opportunity to actually be engaged with industry. A lot of information coming back to us. They're doing all this measuring and we're benefiting from having the overseer done. We're benefiting, we've actually got a weather station on the farm too, which is actually a huge help to the whole program. But there's a lot of information. Okay, it's created some work, but the feedback, amount of feed we're growing, we've got nine paddocks that are cage cut, um, monitoring, seed axed and then we know exactly where we are with our nutrient budgets and that's going to be beneficial to the whole industry, not just us. I mean, that's what we really, the aim is. This is going to set the sort of support for sheep and beef farmers going forward with their nutrient budgets and where we go with regulation, obviously, in the end. And so we've got some good evidence of where we can negotiate where we should be and where we can actually comfortably farm and stay profitable. The programme, I suppose, has encouraged us mainly to the catch crop and look at how far into the winter we can, or how early in the spring we can put a catch crop in. But a lot of the, um, a lot of I think is driven by our own confidence now to have a go. And it's, we were slow to take up the fodder beet, but the grazing maize one's been a huge benefit um, to the summer, the summer feed. And, and also we've been growing barley and we use barley to fill feed gaps. In the early 90s when we first bought this farm, 
this first block we're in 1700 stock units and most of them were ewes and hoggets and we've trebled our total kilograms of production off the farm but we did increase area 155 hectares was added in 2001 so we've increased the area but trebled our production over the total area. What we've been able to do with Bill and Shirley's farm firstly is to look from 1990 till today and what we've been able to see from a greenhouse gas perspective is the efficiency gains that they've made. So in terms of emissions intensity, that's carbon dioxide per kilo of product, they've improved that by around 25%. Now a property like this, they started out as a dryland sheep and beef property running 80% sheep back in the 90s, very prone to summer dry. Today we see a farm that's 80% cattle, but perhaps more importantly in terms of its efficiency gains, they are able to grow a range of forages, they're producing high quality feed throughout the year. So they have got a high quality system that's now very efficient at utilising feed. So it's those kind of productive benefits that are delivering to greenhouse gases. So they're more efficient, therefore per kilo of product, less greenhouse gases. In terms of nitrate leaching, we, the nitrate leaching has changed between 1990 now. Our estimates are that it has increased, but it is still modest nitrate leaching. The important thing that we've been working on with Bill and Shirley is first understanding what that nitrate leaching is, but the second is understanding how the different rotations on the farm and the different livestock contribute to that. On this farm in terms of nutrient leaching, that is being estimated through, we're setting up a farm systems model which represents the farm. We take that data and we put that into Overseer, so we're using Overseer to estimate nutrient losses to water, nitrate leaching in this case. Here we are estimating methane emissions using what's called a green feed. The unit is manufactured in the US and each cow comes in when she puts her head in. Her tag is picked up and she's allocated about 20 grams of pellets. But what we're really interested in is as she breathes out, we collect an air sample and from that we estimate methane emissions. So we can control the number of times a cow can get fed but what we end up with is a lot of measurements over multiple days. As the research comes on tap, the monitor farmers have the opportunity to work out from the models what might work in their farm and then trialling it. So we've got Italian ryegrass on this farm and the research is suggesting that that will, its cool season production will take nitrates out and reduce our leaching. Catch crops coming in after the fodder beet is another thing we're in discussion with Bill about whether that's worth trying. So the farmers get first look at the science, they get to prove that it's practical and adoptable. So practical and adoptable science solutions is what we're after. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.